why do people, why are people, did you know that grain was like a polarizing issue? Like, why are people so upset that I'm adding grain to my photos? Today we're talking about grain and specifically four methods that I use to get film grain in my digital images. And if you're gonna be like this guy and tell me that my entire generation is stupid for adding film grain into our images, watch something else, literally anything else. I like grain for a couple of reasons. I like it because it makes the images feel less digital to me. I like the aesthetic of it. I like the way it sort of breaks apart in the really out of focus areas of an image. It's a preference. It's a personal preference. It's an aesthetic that I gravitate towards. The amazing thing about photography is that it is a subjective art form. And if you wanna add grain to your images and you want that to be your look, guess what? You can do it and I'm gonna show you four ways to do it. Hi everybody, my name is Zach. I'm a photographer and arts administrator based in Santa Barbara, California. And the first method I use to add film grain to my digital images is by using the grain sliders in Lightroom and Capture One. Now, this method is quite obvious. It's quite accessible. If you are interested in grain, you have undoubtedly already done this. So I'm not showing you anything groundbreaking, anything new, but I am gonna pop really quickly into Lightroom and into Capture One just to give you a sense of how I would do it in the software in case you're curious. All right, so here we are in Adobe Lightroom and I have this really great image of my friend Lindy. And if I zoom in here to 300%, you can see there's no grain, right? Um, it's a little bit blurry. I'm not sure what was going on, but there's no grain. Now, if we look over here on the right, we have all of our panels. In the effects panel, you'll see there are three sliders under the grain option. Amount, size, and roughness. Amount controls the amount of grain in the image globally. So if I bump this up all the way to 100 and bring these others down, you can see it's just a, it's a lot of grain and it looks pretty bad. Now, what you can do is adjust the global settings, which I usually keep them about 30. The size is the size of the grain. So the how big are the individual grains? So if we move this up, you can see they're getting a little bit bigger, they're getting a little bit smaller. I like keeping size to about 50, somewhere in there. And the roughness is the texture, so how gritty it is. And I like to keep this around somewhere like 80 or something like that. And this is looking pretty good to me. So that's like a nice grain. You can see it sort of, uh, let's go to 100%. You can see it sort of starts to break apart here in the out of focus area. It really does this nice shimmer to her skin. I just love the effect. Now let's just toggle this on and off so you can see. So that's off and that's after the grain, before the grain, after the grain. Really simple, easy to do in Lightroom. Obviously, this is my preferred way of doing it, and the really amazing thing is that you have these three variables, so you can adjust this however you like and make the grain however you like. And depending on what type of image you're shooting, for me, I found like if I'm shooting a really wide photo where the details are kind of small relatively, I'll add less grain because more grain just doesn't help you see the details. In closer shot images like this, like portraits, things like that, where my subject is filling up most of the frame, I feel like I can do a little bit more grain because there's more detail close up. So the grain's not destroying the details as much. Um, we don't want the grain to distract from the actual picture. And then also like there's a difference between putting grain on color images and black and white images. I find that black and white images can often take a lot more grain than color images can. Just play around with it, make it your own, figure out what works for you. Let's jump into Capture One. All right, so here we are in Capture One. You can see here are some images from the same set. These pictures were captured on my Fujifilm X-Pro3. I have the Fujifilm only version of Capture One. What's really great about Capture One is in the details panel, which is this little magnifying glass here, you also have a grain option similar to what you have in Lightroom. But in Capture One, you have a type where you can select a different type of grain. Now the default is fine grain, but my preferred is silver rich. I like the look of silver rich. And just like in Lightroom, we can adjust the impact, which is basically the global amount of grain. So you can see, as I turn this up, it's like really hardcore grain. But bringing it down to two, you can't even really tell. So you can adjust globally how the grain 
is rendered. Granularity, again, is the roughness, the texture of the grain. And then if you want to change the size of the grain, you can do that by adjusting the type. So, you know, tabular is going to be a little bit larger. There's also harsh grain, which is even larger. So I like using harsh grain in black and white images. Uh, or pictures that can really handle heavy, heavy grain. I'll probably keep the granularity about like, you know, maybe 60 or 70. But for this one, I would go with silver rich. And I might actually bump this back up. So yeah, 75 looks good. Maybe bring in a little bit more. Somewhere around there, uh, I think looks nice. And you can see the silver rich is just a really beautiful quality grain. I actually prefer how the grain is rendered here in Capture One over how it's rendered in Lightroom. So again, play around with these methods of grain in this editing software. Don't just go with what I showed you, really experiment and find out what works for you and do it with a variety of images to really teach yourself you know, what you like, what you're gravitating towards because in the end, it's up to your preference. It's a stylistic thing. I think we should always keep in mind that we want the grain to enhance our images. We don't want it to make them break apart too much or to distract or to take the viewer away from the subject. We don't want any of that. We want the grain to enhance the overall aesthetic, the overall mood, the overall feeling of the photo. So if you're like me, when I was first starting in photography, you might say, well, I don't really like how Lightroom or Capture One is rendering the grain. I want to try something else. So my next three methods of creating film grain and digital images can be used without even touching the grain sliders in editing software. So the second method that I use to achieve film grain in my digital images is an in-camera technique that I learned from Ben Sasso. If you don't know who Ben Sasso is, he's a really wonderful resource for new photographers. He talks a lot about light, composition, style. He has a really great look to his photos. You can go on his Instagram or his Facebook page and read through the comments, and he typically answers a bunch of really important questions. He's just a really, really incredible resource. And one class that he offers is this online blog style class on lighting. And in that class, he talks about film grit. This is basically a technique where you underexpose your image by one or two stops in camera, and then you bring up the exposure in post. And what this does is create this interesting gritty texture in your images. So yes, you will need post-processing software for this, but we're not actually adjusting the grain slider in the software. We're only adjusting the exposure and all of that grit and grain happens by the process of underexposing the image and then bringing up the exposure in post. Now there are a few variables to this and Ben also talks about these, but your results will vary depending on what camera you use and what ISO setting you shoot with. Higher ISO settings will produce more of this effect. It'll make it more intense. Different cameras will have different results. So experiment with your camera, see what it can do in low light, see how much you can push this because at a certain point, you know, we're basically destroying the information by underexposing it and bringing it back. It's a destructive method. So experiment with your camera and make sure that you know, you're not going past the point of no return where your image starts to fall apart. This is a really great artistic technique that we can use, but make sure that you're employing it for a very specific purpose because when you underexpose an image in camera, you can't really slide the slider down to zero and have no grain and you can't really make it properly exposed if you've underexposed it. So just something to keep in mind, but I would encourage you to really be creative with this one and really experiment with it because it produces some beautiful results. Here's another image from that same set with Lindy, and you can see it's underexposed. And as I'll zoom in here, we'll go ahead and zoom into 300%, and I will just bring up the exposure. And you can already see there's some gritty texture starting to appear. Now she's slightly out of focus, so that's sort of helping this. You can see it's like just really breaking apart in these out of focus areas. There's a lot of grit here. This image was shot at ISO 100, so you're not gonna see a huge effect. If I had shot this at something like 800 or higher, you'd probably see more of this grit. Also, if I had underexposed it more, that would have changed the way that the grain is rendered in this. It's not the most extreme example, but it is an example nonetheless of getting this sort of filmic, gritty type of texture in your images. And you can see the grain slider is set to zero. This is all happening in the camera itself. So again, just a technique to experiment with and see if you like it. And if not, don't do it. 
All right, so number three is gonna be the least accessible way of getting grain in your images, and that is by shooting with a camera that can do it in camera. So as you know, I shoot with the Fujifilm X-Pro3. Um, like many Fujifilm cameras, you can adjust color settings to your images directly in the camera so that when you take a photo, the JPEG images are colored with one of Fujifilm's custom color profiles. And you set this up in camera, and you can also make further adjustments to the JPEG images that are coming out of your camera by adjusting things like hue, curve, clarity, sharpness, and grain. So basically you can create custom settings in your camera to exactly what you want the image to look like, and the camera will produce JPEGs with all that information. With newer cameras like the X-Pro3, we have a few options in terms of grain, four variables to be exact, and that is strong and weak grain, as well as large and small grain. My preferred combination is large weak grain. I think this produces the most pleasing look. Out of the four methods, this is probably my least favorite version because it's limited to the Fujifilm JPEGs. If you're shooting raw photos with these cameras, you're not gonna get the grain from Fujifilm, you have to be shooting JPEG files. Also, the actual look of the grain itself is not my favorite. I, I wish we had more options in terms of the style of grain. I know that Fujifilm is giving us more and more options as their cameras progress, and I am definitely grateful to have this feature rather than not have it. And when I do shoot my Fujifilm JPEGs, I'm grateful to have the grain. I think it looks just fine, but it's not my preferred method just because it's not my preferred grain look. It just doesn't look that natural to me. Again, you might completely disagree and that's totally fine. I'm not claiming to be an expert in this. This is just my own personal opinion, my own experience. So if your opinion differs, that is totally valid, but I'm just giving you mine. So that's the third way. Again, take it or leave it. It might apply to you, it might not. Now, the fourth and final method that I use to add grain to my images is the reason that you're all here, and that is creating film grain in Photoshop. So let's jump back to when I first started photography, and I was really inspired by the work of Corey Vanderplug. So Corey Vanderplug creates these really incredible, contrasty, grainy images, and as I was beginning photography, I thought to myself, how does he get this look? I need to be able to do this. This grain is just amazing. It was like nothing I had ever seen before. And I went into Lightroom and I tried to make it look like his photos and it just didn't. It just wasn't the same look. And so I, I remember I couldn't find any information about how to do this. So I just went into Photoshop and tried a few things and played around. And I came up with a technique that I still use that I think was really effective. And this was the first image that I used it on. I ended up printing this image pretty large and I think I gave it as a gift to somebody and I don't, I don't know, but I remember the guy at the shop, it was Sammy's camera and I had asked him, I was like, do you know like how to get grain? Like I'm trying to print this photo, but I wanna add some grain to it. And he was like, well, I don't know. <laughs> And I, and I ended up like figuring it out and printing the photo. I remember he was like, yeah, it turned out really good. It looks, it looks cool. So that was like big for me. I don't know. But anyway, the same process still applies. Now, funny enough, Corey Vanderplug himself put out a video recently about how he does it in Photoshop. And actually his method is a little bit different than mine. I think the results though are largely the same. And I think my method is just a little bit easier, but I'm gonna give you an assignment. <laughs> and that is, I want you to finish watching this video, use my technique on one of your images, then go to Corey's video, watch his video and use his technique on one of your images and see which technique, which type of grain you prefer, because I'm just curious. I just wanna know like what you think you like more, I don't know. Just let me know in the comments. Come back to this video and let me know. I'd really love it if some of you would do that. That would be really cool. So anyway, enough talk. Let's jump into Photoshop and see how it's done. All right, so here we are in Adobe Photoshop and here again is our photo of Lindy. And I'll just zoom in and show you again. This is no grain applied to this image. So for my method, the first thing that I do is make a new layer. And then to our new layer, I'll call it grain one. And I'm going to press the keyboard shortcut, shift, delete, and I'm gonna fill that new layer with 50% gray. 50% gray, okay. Now I'm going to go up to 
our filter in the top menu, and I'm going to scroll down to the noise. I'm going to add noise. Again, you can play around with the percentage. A higher percent will give you more grain. A lower percent will give you less. I found that 10 is fine. Somewhere between like eight, nine, 10 works fine. Uniform looks a little bit too digital for me. Gaussian is more realistic. Monochromatic is important to check because if you don't check it, you'll get color information in the grain and we really don't want that. So make sure that that's checked. And then we say, okay. Now we have a big gray square. So how do we see Blendy? We go to our blend mode and we change the blend mode to soft light. So now we have this really wonderful layer of grain. And if I toggle it off and on, you can see what it does. But this is still looking quite digital to me and it doesn't look very pleasing. So what I do here is I duplicate this grain layer by pressing the keyboard shortcut Command J. And now what I want is to enlarge the grain on this second layer. So that will have one layer of regular size grain and one layer of large grain. And that will give us a more realistic look. So how we do that is we make sure that we're selected on this grain copy layer. And I'm gonna use the keyboard shortcut Command T. And what I'm gonna do is just extend this layer over Lindy, just like that. And now we've enlarged the grain. And again, this is all variable, so you can do this as much or as little as you want, but let's just see what this looks like. I'm gonna press enter. Okay, so we've done that. But now, one bit of housekeeping that I want to just get out of the way right here. We've extended that layer, so now that layer is extending beyond our usable frame. And we don't really want that because this is gonna create unusable data and make our file bigger than it needs to be. So just a bit of housekeeping, I'm going to just select the main frame by pressing the keyboard shortcut Command A. So that's only selecting our frame, our usable frame. And I'm going to make sure that this grain one copy is selected and I'm going to press the keyboard shortcut Command J. And what that did was it just duplicated only the selected portion of the grain. So now I can delete the grain copy because we've, ha we've made a duplicate version of only the usable portion of this grain copy. So I can just delete the first grain copy. And now I'm going to rename this layer one grain two. So now we have two layers of grain. We have a larger one and we have a smaller one. So if I toggle this grain two off, you can see what it does. It really adds quite a bit to the image. Now what I'm gonna do now is group these two grain layers and say the keyboard shortcut Command G. I'm gonna title this group grain. And now we can toggle the grain off and on. And the other really cool thing we can do is adjust the opacity. So I might just go down to 50%. And that to me is like not quite enough. So I might bring it up to like 75-ish. And that is looking quite nice. So if I toggle this off and toggle it on, off, and on. And you can see it creates a really beautiful look, a little bit more realistic than what you might see in other editing software. And you can really see it in the areas here where you have some out of focus area. It just starts to break apart in this really, really beautiful way. It makes her skin shimmery and beautiful. I just really love this aesthetic, as I've said <laughs> way too many times in this video. So again, toggle it off and on, it just adds a nice character. Now, I can't stress to you enough that I want you to experiment with this. Experiment with the opacity of the layers, with the size of the grain layers. You can even add more than one grain layer. Really explore and experiment. And then when you've landed on something, you can create an action for yourself. Let's just look at that. So if I delete this grain layer, I've already made this into an action and I called it grain. And now this, just happens for me automatically and now I have the grain there so you can do this for yourself so that it's a click of the button and you have your grain in Photoshop so you don't have to go through that process every time I was going to give you a download with my action but I'm not going to do that because I want you to actually go through this process and actually experiment with it because chances are you will have 
different preferences than I do in regards to how you want this to look. And it's so customizable and personal to you that I think it's important for you to just get in there and experiment and then make the action for yourself. And then we can always adjust depending on the image that we're editing at the time. All right, so that about wraps it up for film grain. A couple of important points to remember is make sure that you give yourself time to experiment with this. Make sure that the grain is enhancing your images rather than taking away from them. And really remember that it is up to you how you wanna edit your images. Don't let haters on YouTube tell you that you're stupid for adding grain into your images. If you wanna add grain, you can add grain and now you know how to do it. So I hope that some of you will take the challenge and go watch Corey's video and edit both ways and come back to this video and let me know what you think. I am so appreciative of the amazing comments and support that I've gotten recently on the channel. It's been really wonderful and I'm just very grateful for that. And um, as always, thank you, thank you for watching um, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Love is